What's up guys, Brendan Hancock here with another episode of Groove Subaru today. And yes, it's finally here, the all new 2019 Subaru Ascent. Now this vehicle has to be one of the most anticipated cars we've had in a very long time because it's the largest car we've ever made. It has 153.5 total cubic feet of passenger volume inside, which makes it not only bigger than the Honda Pilot, but also bigger than the Toyota Highlander. Now this is the third car we've ever made on the all new Subaru Global Platform. The Subaru Impreza and the Subaru Crosstrek came before it. And this comes in both seven and eight passenger configurations with the one you see behind me being the touring trim level. And we'll get into some of the more specifics there later. Now, a couple of other things that are gonna come standard on this car that we've never seen before on, on any Subaru, EyeSight, standard on all new ascents, does not matter on trim level. So you're gonna get the pre-collision braking, the adaptive cruise control, the lane keep assist, and everything that comes with the EyeSight system. You're also gonna get the Starlink telematic system, so it's our safety and security system for the car, which will give you features such as enhanced roadside assistance and also emergency crash notification. As always, come standard with Subaru Symmetrical all-wheel drive, and we're also gonna have X mode standard on all of these, which is our off-road mode. So you have features such as throttle control management to help prevent slippage, and also hill descent control, which along with the all-wheel drive, make this one of the most capable seven-passenger family cars out there. Now, you can get up to 27 miles per gallon on this car on the highway with over a 500 mile range, which in my personal opinion, makes this one of the best family cars ever. You get 19 cup holders. I know you've heard that before. It's pretty ridiculous. You get 19 cup holders in this car, up to eight USB ports, and available 4G LTE Wi-Fi inside the car so all your kids can comfortably be sitting in the back streaming their other videos while you have nice peace and quiet inside. Now let's take a look under the hood at the all new 2.4 liter twin scroll turbo four cylinder. Now I know you guys heard me say four cylinder, but do not fret, this engine is far more capable than many of the V6 competitors. Uh, now this is an all new engine for the 2019 Ascent. We do not have this engine on any other vehicles currently. And this is a 2.4 liter direct injection twin scroll turbo four cylinder, which is very hard to say uh, very fast. So um, this is gonna produce 260 horsepower, 277 foot pounds of torque. And the awesome thing is that you're gonna get all of that torque at just 2000 RPM, and it's gonna hold it all the way up to 4800 RPM, which is a really long power band, which gives you all the torque and pep and fun that you need, and also makes this vehicle extremely capable. Now, one thing I did not expect that was gonna come from this engine is it can actually run on regular unleaded gasoline. Now this is the touring trim level, so it does have up to a 5,000 pound towing capacity, which is the largest towing capacity we've ever had for Subaru. But do realize though that it does depend on trim level because the base model is only equipped to tow up to 2,000 pounds. So uh, if you are looking to tow a boat or something like that, uh, you'd need to get the premium or above trim level with the trailer hitch uh, to do that. So um, in terms of transmission, we're gonna see a high torque Lineatronic CVT transmission on this. It is gonna come with the manual mode. So you will have the paddle shifters and can manually shift between gears. There will be eight synthetic gears that you can shift through there uh, just to give you a little bit of extra control. Uh, and of course, as always, Subaru's standard symmetrical all wheel drive. Now let's take a look at some of the design elements that we see here. Now there's definitely a lot of carryover from both the Outback and Forester on the outside. A lot of the stuff, and we'll see it when we go inside, we'll see carryover from other vehicles that we've seen on the global platform, the Impreza and the Crosstrek. But in terms of design elements that we see here, we are gonna have the LED steering responsive headlights. The actual design is more of what I see on the Outback. And overall, I think that the front fascia really resembles more of the Outback than it does the Forester. Um, we will have LED steering responsive fog lights down here. Um, which is really nice and overall just kind of a general Subaru design uh, in my opinion most like the Outback. Now as we come over here to the side this is this touring trim level so this is going to come standard with the 20 inch rims that you see here. Um, both the limited and the touring trim level will come standard with 20 inch rims. They are available as an option on the premium but 18 inch rims are going to be standard on both the premium and base model. Now the touring trim level as well on the side mirrors that we see here, we are gonna get that satin chrome kind of finish that we've seen on a couple cars, kind of uh, very similar to the 50th anniversary Outback we've had. Um, and the turn signals that we have here on the lights, very similar to what we're seeing on the Impreza and the Crosstrek, other global platform cars, where we will have the blind spot detection on the inside of the mirror here. Uh, we saw that new on the Outback this year also. Now this is the touring trim. So a couple things we'll be able to spot. We do have the chrome lines here, both front and bottom, as well as on the door here. And this is gonna come standard with keyless entry and push to start, which is actually standard on a lot of the trim levels. Um, it's even an option on a premium, depending on which package you get. Now, I'd mentioned that you have Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive, you have X mode, 
Not only do you have those features, you also have 8.7 inches of ground clearance, which is huge. To give you guys kind of an idea, my Nissan Xterra had 9.1 inches of ground clearance. Granted, I have lifted it, but I took it off-road all the time when it was stock height. Uh, and if you think of it, 8.7, 9.1, I mean, that's very, very little. So this is a very, very capable car. Not only do you have tons of cargo space and interior volume, but you're also gonna have these roof rails up top, which allow you to throw things such as uh, ski rack, cargo basket, cargo, you know, kayak up here, canoe, whatever you need to, um, to give you extra storage space if needed up top. Now, as we go over here to the back, one thing, I'm not sure how many of you guys have actually seen photos of this, uh, but of the 2019 Forester, um, overall, you know, the back, it looks very, very similar to what the 2019 Forester would look like. I see a lot along the sides of the Forester, uh, kind of too. It's like a stretched out Forester. Um, it does look like a Toyota Highlander a lot too, I will give it that. Um, but this bar that we see across here, very, very similar to what we're seeing on the new 19 Forester. Um, now you are gonna get on the premium and above trim levels. So you'll have the blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, uh, and also reverse automatic braking is gonna be standard on those trim levels as well. Now this removable panel that you see here, this is where the trailer hitch will go. So kind of like you see on, on cars like the Chevy Suburban with the trailer hitch where it's built into the actual car, um, that's what you're gonna see here on this, which is really what makes that such a capable towing vehicle. 5,000 pounds is a lot. I wouldn't tow, you know, a huge tiny home, but a big, you know, decently sized boat you could tow uh, with that type of capacity. So we do have an automatic rear lift gate. Uh, this is standard on both the limited and touring trim levels available on the premium with certain option packages that we see here. You have the third row up right now. When we do fold both the second and third row, we have 86.5 cubic feet of cargo volume in here. Plenty of length if you wanted to camp, you know, comfortably two people in the back here. Um, this is a Subaru. I know, I know a lot of people do that with the Outback, and this is even longer than that. So uh, definitely would be comfortable in order to do that. Now, behind the third row, we do have under here some storage. This one has the rear compartment uh, cover that you use if you have the third row folded down, which we'll show you how to do in a second. But one thing I really like under here, we've seen these kind of storage spaces in, for example, the Forester, but we've never seen it with the kind of plastic material that we have here. And I actually really like that. You easily have uh, all your, you know, you know, your jack and your, uh, your lift and everything here, uh, nice, easily tucked away, easy to access. And also if you have like, you know, wet swimsuits or dirty, muddy shoes or something like that, you can just store them under here, here just kind of set it and forget it um, and keeps everything nice and clean. Not a huge amount of storage space behind, you know, when the third, uh, you know, row is up, but you have ample leg room for the third row, which in my opinion is a little more important. So um, other things back here, not too much. We do have um, kind of the cigarette lighter outlet over here. We do have a subwoofer. Yes, bumping the tunes in the new Subaru Ascent for the family. Uh, we do have a little light over here as well. Um, and also that you'll notice these hooks on the sides here. Um, these are if you wanted to tie down certain items, they'll also allow you to attach a net, which is an accessory you can purchase uh, for the new Ascent. Now, in order to fold these third rows down, you have to pull up here and just push it down. They have these nice little handles. Those are for pulling up here if you wanna get that in the upright position. Now you'll notice how this kind of locked right here. That's the upright position for it. These third rows do recline, so even the third rows can recline the seat quite a bit. This is a unreclined position. This is the reclined position. So I'd say about 15, 20 degrees of recline there. So easy to access. When you do have these pushed down, you do have quite a bit of space. Um, you can disconnect this you know, center third row kind of seatbelt thing uh, if you wanted to kind of tuck that away so you have a little bit more space here. Uh, and then you also have this entry point right here is about four feet wide, which when you're putting large items in the back of your car, it's really helpful to have a nice wide opening, uh, which makes loading things into this car very, very easy. Um, now it's quite easy to uh, tuck down the seats in the second row. There's two latches that you would need to do in sequence to fold them flat. Uh, they make it quite easy, labeled step one and step two. And when you fold down the second and third rows, you have 86.5 cubic feet of cargo space. Now let's go sit inside the driver's seat and see all the new cool technology and features that are new for the 2019 Ascent. Now we're inside the all new 2019 Subaru Ascent and with 153.5 cubic feet of interior volume, this 
is a big, big vehicle. Now, this is the Touring model, so that's why you'll notice the brown leather seats on the inside. And this trim, it comes exclusively with seven passenger configuration. Now, on most of the trims, so for example, the Premium and Limited models, you can get either a seven seat option with the captain chairs in the back or with an eight passenger occupancy setup, which would have a bench seat in the second row. Now, personally, I really like the captain's chairs, whether you were getting the Touring trim level or not. I think it's easier um, to kind of get in and out of. And also for the people that are in the back, it's nice to have an, a place for your, you know, your leg to go kind of in the middle there. Makes it feel a little bit larger in my personal opinion. Uh, but we're certainly noticing quite a bit of carryover here from a lot of the other vehicles that we have that are currently on the global platform. So both the Impreza and the Crosstrek are on the global platform currently, as is this vehicle here. And we're seeing a lot of the characteristics from those vehicles inside. So for example, if we take a look at the steering wheel, this steering wheel, it is leather wrapped being the touring model, uh, but does not really seem to be too different than that of, for example, um, you know, the Crosstrek or, you know, the Outback. Um, all of the places for like the eyesight controls and adaptive cruise control are all located in the same spot. All of the layout and setup of all the steering wheel controls on the left side for your Bluetooth, voice activation, all that kind of stuff uh, is pretty much the same. One thing we don't have over here is for those vehicles that are on the global platform that did have the 5.7 inch screen up here, we used to have an info button that would change what was up there. And now you actually do have two arrows up here which allow you to kind of change that screen um, you know, in two different directions. You used to have to hit info and go all the way through all the different options, which was kind of annoying, um, which now you don't have to do that anymore. So that was definitely well thought out there. Um, as for our controls over here on the little toggles to control the front screen, um, those are in the same location and uh, heated steering wheel, same location, standard feature on the touring trim level, um, but same place as we'd have it on the Outback or, uh, you know, touring Forester. So, as for the eyesight buttons that we see over here, uh, very similar setup to that of the Outback that we're looking at. So our track control off button, our blind spot, if we wanted to turn that feature off, buttons over here. And then our automatic rear lift gate, as well as our memory height adjustment, uh, is also located in the same spot. The one thing I really, really like specifically about the Touring, though, is this kind of high contrast you know, different colors of leather that they have here. So it doesn't matter what color in the touring trim of the Ascent that you get, you're going to get the brown leather interior, but they still have this light sort of, you know, ivory colored leather here on the dash. And then in contrast with the wood and the brown leather really ties it all together nicely. Uh, we are gonna notice quite a bit of stitching here and also the high contrast silver stitching that we see up here, which really gives it that sort of high, you know, quality leather feel to it. Uh, makes it feel a lot more luxurious. And truthfully, this is a very luxurious interior. I have to say, truthfully, this is the nicest Subaru I've ever been in. It's also probably the most expensive Subaru I've ever been in as well. So um, the Touring trim level really comes with all the goodies, everything you could possibly imagine. Um, as for the new infotainment system, we're gonna take a look here. Um, this is still gonna be an eight inch screen, I do believe, uh, but this is the third generation of the Starlink infotainment system. So. There are no vehicles that currently have this exact setup. One of the biggest benefits of this is that all of the software updates are gonna be able to be done over the air using the Wi-Fi that's built in here. So, um, you know, you take a look at the Outback, the Legacy, um, the Crosstrek, you know, the ones that have the eight inch screen, they do have Wi-Fi capabilities to do software updates for the infotainment system, but not for the navigation. This is gonna be all over the air. So you don't have to come back to your dealership. You just need to hook up your Wi-Fi at your home and then it will let you know when updates are available for the infotainment system. Uh, very similar setup here though, for the most part. Um, you know, we don't have our phone paired, but as for apps, if we click on here, um, we do still have AHA and Pandora are here. The Starlink app is on here. Um, obviously, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both standard on this vehicle. Uh, but we also have the My Subaru app for the first time, which is actually on here as well. One of the nicest things is that they have made some upgrades to the Starlink safety and security system, which will be standard on all new Ascents, uh, where it actually has a con available concierge service where you can actually schedule, you know, service appointments and things of that nature, uh, which, <clears throat> and also, you know, when you're getting your monthly vehicle health report emails and things like that, you're gonna be using the My Subaru app. So it actually makes a lot of sense to have that on here. So this is the first time we're gonna be seeing that, uh, which is nice to see. Um, as for the navigation, looks pretty similar. It looks like it's also through TomTom. Tom, so this is gonna look a lot like what we're seeing in the, you know, the new 2018 vehicles that have the eight inch touchscreen. I don't notice too much different here. Uh, very high re resolution, seems to be, you know, pretty quick. It does look a smidge different, you know, just a kind of a ever so slightly like the background, like the contrast looks just a smidge different, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty much the same there. Um, likewise, you can always change the view. I personally like the nice little 
3D kind of first person view there myself. Um, as we go over here to media, everything here is going to be the same. Um, the biggest thing too, this infotainment system though now does have an available Wi-Fi hotspot that you can actually, you know, all your kids in the back can actually hook up their devices to the Wi-Fi network. Now that's available through AT&T, you do need to sign up for that. Um, however, it's not just Wi-Fi to do software updates, you actually can have a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot in the car as well, which is really nice. Um, now as we go down here, you know, all the knobs and everything here look very similar to what we have now on a lot of the 18 models with this, you know, new infotainment system. So we are excluding the Forester, the WRX STI, those kind of cars. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of carryover up here. Um, now, as for the climate control, this is a whole different ball game because we don't have a car that has a second and third row. Um, so you do actually have the vents in the back here. Not only are they going to have automatic climate control back here that they can control themselves, they'll also have the heated seats. They can adjust the mode, adjust the fan speed. They'll have two USB ports and also uh, a normal standard outlet there to plug in a laptop or whatever they need to back there uh, if they need to do some work and can connect to the Wi-Fi. So this is kind of a mobile office, as I like to say, um, with tons of tons of practicality back here. And uh, we'll take a look kind of in the second and third rows here in just a little bit. But um, climate control, this does come with three zone automatic climate control. Um, and you can also, so you can adjust, you know, passenger or driver's side over here by itself. We can adjust the passenger side. And then we can also, there's a button here that says rear control hold. So if I do that, that allows me to control exclusively the temperature in the back. Now, on higher trim levels of current 2018 models like the Outback, um, you know, that have that, uh, the passenger's control is what control back there but now independently you can control it up here if you don't trust your kids to not be crazy and do stuff like that so you hit rear control lock and then you can control that temperature back there just hit it again to release um, you can also actually instead of just having to manually go back here and close the vents you actually have a button up here we can just hit rear on or off and just turn off those if there's nobody in the back seats which is cool um, other than that, you know, in terms of we do have the dual climate here, um, all the buttons are pretty much the same for the most part, except for air conditioned seats. We now have air conditioned seats in a Subaru. That is a first to my knowledge there. Um, so just like with the heated seats, there's three different settings, high, medium, and low, uh, both for the front and passenger. We do have, um, you know, for the driver and passenger, we do have uh, heated seats in the back, but no air conditioned seats, which you know what? Hey, come on, you can't have everything. Um, as we move down here, we do have a nice wood grain setup here that continues on. Same color as we're seeing over here on the doors. Um, shift knob looks no different. We do have the X mode button here. All new 2019 ascents will come standard with X mode and with 8.7 inches of ground clearance. This is a very, very capable vehicle. Um, so we do have X mode up here, which is nice. Um, this is going to give us the inclinometer up here, also our traction monitor. It will default to showing you that screen up here on the 5.7 inch screen. And it does actually, uh, just like with the cross track, it does show us which way our wheels are turning, which is really nice. Um, we also have our auto vehicle hold here. So if you are going up steep grades and want to use the parking brake to kind of hold you, if you need to, you know, open the door and kind of see where you're, where you're at and don't want to necessarily lose traction by going into park and then into drive, um, you can use the auto vehicle hold button there. And then we also have the auxiliary cable and two USBs. There's up to eight USB ports available in this car, which is incredible. So tons and tons of places to charge your phone. Um, these, however, are gonna be the ones you're gonna wanna use if you're trying to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Um, standard electric parking brake there, and then just um, same shifter that we've seen in a lot of our cars here. Uh, it does have the manual mode. All the sense will have the paddle shifters, so that's nice. Uh, and then we have two out of the 19 cup holders here. Um, on each of the front doors, we have three here, three here. Uh, we've got two there. We've got two in the back here. I'll show you a lot of the other cup holders when we get to the back, but it's uh, apparently Subaru owners are really, really thirsty. Um, and then as for that, other than uh, what we've talked about here, this looks very much, these vents up here are the same that we're seeing on the Impreza and Crosstrek. They do remind me of a Ford Focus. I'm trying to forget that, but they are practical and nice. Um, and we do have this kind of like brushed aluminum sort of look here, which just gives it that kind of mixed media art sort of feel to it, where it's just kind of a lot high contrast materials. Um, everything's pretty high quality here. I mean, obviously, you know, up here is not, you know, fine Italian leather, but everywhere you actually would touch um, very, very nice materials on the inside. A um, couple other things that are new. Up here, we do have um, 
this really cool mirror. So you do actually have the ability to store sunglasses or whatever you want to up here, but it kind of has this locking feature where it will show you what's going on in the back seat. So if you don't trust your kids, you know, in the back to be behaving themselves, you can keep an eye on them with this mirror up here. And when you don't need to use it, just stick it up right there. Um, we do have the Starlink safety and security system, like I mentioned, standard on all. And we do have also the ability uh, to turn off your lane departure and then your pre-collision braking uh, elements of eyesight up here. And now we actually do have a, sh um, because the touring will come standard with the moonroof, you can get it on the, lim it's, I think standard on the limited and touring and then optional on the premium, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but you can open just the sunshade if you want to. And I will tell you, this moonroof is absolutely massive. It almost makes you feel like you're driving a convertible. Um, now, to actually open it, you use the other button right here. Um, it does only go back about halfway, so it's not going to go all the way to the back there, but still gives you a nice uh, feel of being out in the open air, which is really nice. So just close that forward here for us. Um, and then really the only uh, other two things that we haven't talked about yet that are really different, the rear view mirror is quite a bit more high tech than it was previously. We do have a front uh, view option, or I'm sorry, like a rear view option to kind of, if you can't see, like if there's people sitting in the third row there, you just kind of pull that back and then there's actually a camera there. So that will show you what you would be seeing looking directly out of the back there. So you're able to see what's going on. Um, and then standard rear view camera here for you. Um, it does have the trajectory, reverse automatic braking, parking sensors, all of that. The cool thing too is when you go from reverse into park, I'm sorry, reverse into drive, it automatically activates the front view camera there, which shows up on the 5.7 inch screen. So you can decide if you wanted to, you can just hit the view button up here um, and, and look at that. Like if you're pulling out into an intersection where you can't really see too well, um, you can use it there. But it basically assumes that if you're going from reverse to drive and, and you're moving at slow speeds, it assumes you're probably parking. And so it really does give us a 360 view all the way around, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, other than that, all the other um, screens that are up here we have seen before. Um, so this is just the same stuff we're going to be seeing in like the 18 Crosstrek. Um, that 5.7 inch screen is, is giving us all the same details there. Possibly slightly higher resolution, but no drastically different information. Um, the other thing we do have on this mirror though that I forgot to mention, if you do touch one of the mirrors over here, you have ability to change some settings for home link, compass, you can change the language, what's up here. And depending on which button you push, it, it will kind of almost like a computer, kind of scroll through different options and show them to you. So um, that is definitely a much nicer mirror than I've ever seen on a Subaru. So uh, this is a large vehicle. So let's go take a look at the second row. I have this adjusted to where I would be sitting in the driver's seat. This is exactly where I would have it. I'm not, you know, cheating anything here. I'm six foot one. And then I'm going to adjust the second row to kind of show you what it's like back there. And then the third row to where I would sit to keep everything comfortable. You can actually be in the third row at six feet tall and be comfortable behind yourself, behind yourself, which is amazing. So let's go take a look at the second row. Now in the second row with the captain's chairs, I, I don't know what it is about captain's chairs. I just think they're nicer. Now it's really nice that in this car, you have the option in all trim levels, excluding the base, you can get captain's chairs. Now the Touring, yes, it's gonna come standard with them, but I think they're better anyway. But most cars, you know, you have to get high trim levels in order to get that. You can get this in the second from the base, uh, which I think is really nice. Now you do have um, this, right now I'm the farthest back. The seats do slide, you know, forward and backward. This is as far back as they go. And I can recline as well. Um, this would be as far back as it goes right here. And I'm sitting behind myself with a comfortable recline. I obviously could sacrifice that if you had a little bit of a shorter person up front, obviously it would be more leg room. Uh, but this is as far back as it goes. Now, um, a couple things back here. In order for me to adjust this so that I myself at six, you know, six one, can comfortably fit in the third row. I can still have this recline to a comfortable position. So right about here. And then I slide to where I have, legs aren't touching, you know, but so legs, you know, aren't touching here. So that this is a comfortable position for me to be on on a long road trip. And the nice thing is too, a lot of the cars previously didn't really have vents to control the airflow, but I do actually have vents right up here. I can get it directly blowing air right at my face, which is nice. No other Subaru that I can think of has that for the passengers in the back. I have automatic climate control. I've got heated seats here. We have two USBs here for both the, the second person on the, you know, second row person on this side and this side to charge their phones. And you have a nice full on normal outlet here where you can plug in a laptop, DVD player, whatever you want to. Um, I also have two additional cup holders down here, which is nice. And then I have a cup holder here. And then I have I would say two, 
it, kind of a little storage thing on the side, but I don't know what kind of, maybe a small Red Bull would fit in that, you know, third one. So you can kind of classify that as a cup holder. I don't, I don't think it is. So um, two right here, here, and here. So I could have four beverages, because like I said, Subaru owners are just thirsty. Um, and then over here, we do have sun, uh, sun shades for the second and also the third row as well. Um, so this is gonna be really nice, especially if you have kids, this is just built right in here. So you don't have to worry about buying that stupid suction cup thing that goes on the window there for it. Uh, very, very comfortable place. Now, I have adjusted this to exactly where I can still be comfortable. Legs are not touching. I'm sitting behind myself. Now let's go take a look and see how much room is in the third row. Now this is another reason that I really like the seven passenger occupancy, especially if you have you know teenagers or taller, you know even adults that would need to sit in the third row because I have this second row where I would comfortably be able to sit. It has an actual you know I have some recline where I'm I'm leaning back a little bit and I feel that in this position I would be comfortable on a long road trip. I actually feel that sitting in this position, I would be comfortable in the third row on a long road trip, not just you know to work or something like that. I feel like I could actually sit back here comfortable if I have the seven passenger occupancy. Because you know, if I had to actually cram my you know actually sit, you know put my legs back here behind this, it's doable. But I would have to you know not recline the second row, meaning that I'm not as comfortable in this seat, which means people are having to sacrifice comfort. Now, if I have the third row, the ability to just put your knee you know right here the ability to put your knee right here as well. I wouldn't say, you know, three adults with, you know, that are six feet tall would comfortably fit back here for a long trip. I don't think so. Um, but it is comfortable for two people, a little bit of knee here, a little bit of knee there. And I, I feel I could sit back here for a long period of time. As for headroom, I don't think you really want to have a hat in the back, but I can, you know, I'm not slouching or anything like that. I've got plenty of headroom. When I put my hat on, you know, I do have a little bit of touch there, so no hats in the third row, unfortunately. Uh, but this is still a very comfortable place to be. Um, I do have, you know, the vents and stuff that are coming back here. I can get air blasting in my face, which you know, in a lot of other um, of the Subaru models, you know, only the high, high trim levels have vents at all in the back. But in here, you know, we're getting plenty of air back here. It's not stuffy. I have speakers back here. I've got two cup holders, little trays for some little goodies, um, and then I also have, there's two USB chargers over here. And it looks like some of these. Um, there's places where there's some things that are absent. It looks like this might be where you put, can have another outlet, another you know USB charger option here. Um, they would be genuine Subaru parts, you know accessory parts, but uh, this one just does not come equipped with them. Um, we do also have, I notice here, the, the latch system is you know in place. We have tethers and anchors back here for car seats in both of these options. And I notice there actually are even latch um, options down here, the metal anchors for a car seat, even in the third row, uh, which is not seen very often. Um, so I do actually have that over here. Now I do have the ability to recline the third row. In the upright position, it's pretty straight up. I mean, it's no one would want to sit, you know, up, upright like that. Um, you do want to definitely recline that seat. Uh, but I have a, quite a bit of, uh, of recline here. The seat, the headrests are designed to be able to kind of tuck flat down like this. So don't sit with them like that, not comfortable at all. Um, but that's just so you have better visibility out of the back if no one's sitting back here. Um, so just lift this up, boom, nice and comfortable. Um, this will come down here for the seat belt in the middle row. Um, I think you could definitely comfortably fit, you know, three little kids back here, you know, up to maybe like 10 or something. Um, I mean, adults if you really had to, but like I said, in that scenario, you're gonna probably be compromising some of the second row um, you know, comfort or a shorter driver up front in order to make that happen. Uh, but truthfully, for the most part, like I said, very comfortable at six feet in a, in a seven passenger configuration um, without compromising any type of comfort for the passengers. With an eight passenger configuration, I'm gonna have to not be, I'm gonna have to be sitting up, you know, a lot straighter, not really able to recline uh, the second row in order to make sure that the third row occupants have a little bit of leg room. Um, unlike the second row, there's no sliding option here for the third row. I can't slide this back anymore. It's just a matter of reclining it. Um, I do wish that it was a little easier. You know, you do have to kind of reach over. It's kind of a touch, touch, you know, reach to, to you know, grab this tether to adjust it. But um, so long as you just leave it in that position, it's pretty easy. So this is an extremely, extremely comfortable car. Yes, you don't get the amount of storage capacity that you would get in a Suburban, but I think that I'm literally about as comfortable in this as a six foot tall person in the third row that I would be in a Chevy Suburban with 27 miles per gallon on the highway. Pretty incredible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video to be helpful. Now, if you guys have videos you wanna see on the new Ascent, make sure to leave those in the comments below and we'll make sure to check them out. If you liked what you saw as well, make sure to leave us a like below. 
Now, it's important to note that this is not currently a vehicle that's in our inventory, although many people have ordered their Ascents and we're starting to see them probably trickle in sometime in June. Now, if you are looking to get a new Ascent, however, most of these are already spoken for, so you'll probably have to place an order if you are looking to get one soon. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. For more helpful videos like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time on Curtis Super Today. Take care.